Here are the top 10 tips to growing big, beautiful collards. What's going on, everybody? Thank you guys for tuning in with me today. Uh, it's a beautiful early morning, and I like to give you guys eight tips to grow big, beautiful collards. Now, tip number one, you got to grow the right variety. So when we're talking collars, there are a ton of different varieties. You got flash collars, vates, Georgia Southerners. You got top bunch collars. You got tree collars that can last 10 to 12 years without having to regrow them. And then you've got um, champion collars, Morris Hatton collars. Now, from my experience, the two top most productive collars are going to be your tree collars, obviously, because they're going to last about 10 to 12 years. And then you, what you see behind me are the top bunch collars. Now, the top bunch collars I find, as far as the plant goes, they're going to be the most productive. Now, when it comes to the best tasting collars uh, from the people that I've given collars to, they say the best tasting collars are the Morris Heading collars. All right, so there you go. I like to really stick with the top bunch collars. Uh, I do have tree collar seeds that I'm gonna start to plant soon, but uh, I would say the most productive, if you like to really get out and plant every year, you gotta go with the top bunch collars. All right, so that's number one. Number two, plant and you know, put out your 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 collar plantees outside 30 days before spring appears all right so 30 days before whatever your spring date is where you are that's when you want to get them outside because you want to get them in a location where they're going to be that'll give them time to really get established and then when the time is right they'll start to move now, if you're where I am, I'm in grow zone 5B. So when I put the plants outside, it takes them a while to really start moving, especially when it's cold out. But when the time is right, like I said, when they go, they really go. So that's tip number two. Tip number three, you wanna start the plants uh, in seed trays. And here's the reason why. Now, I've experimented with direct sowing and what tends to happen is if you're like me i've got uh chipmunks around i've got birds around and what they do is they sit and watch me and as soon as i plant anything here they come to disrupt everything i've done and eat the seeds you know so any animal that likes to eat seeds they're gonna watch you and then you're gonna put them down and they're gonna eat them and basically what this will do is help you save the seeds as well but not only that you can directly put the plants where you want them to be, which is gonna lead us to tip number four, which is you wanna plant two feet apart at the least. So my collars are about two feet apart. And the reason why you wanna do this is because collars grow big and they need space to grow, all right? Now, a lot of you are growing your collars in buckets, which is great. But if you look at my raised bed here, my soil only goes about four inches deep here. But see, what you gotta realize is the roots on collars like to go out. So the more room they have to go out, the bigger they're gonna get. So yeah, of course the roots will go down, they'll tap down too, but they really right, like to, to, to really stretch and go out. So that's why you want to plant your your collards and your cabbages as well about two feet apart so there needs to be two feet on each side so tip number five you want to plant in the area that gets the most sunlight so right now um i have a, a southward facing garden for the most part we do have trees that kind of shade it once the sun is uh directly south but this is the area here where my collars are gonna get the most sunlight. This is the sunniest location. And what you want to happen is the sun to hit the collars from all angles, right? So right now the sun is starting to pop up 
on the east side and they're going to start to hit the collars on this side as they rotate all the way around it's going to stop once it's get wet so that way it's getting direct sunlight now typically you got you want a location where you're going to get six plus hours this area is going to get all the sunlight so this is again going to enable the light to hit the collars on all angles which is going to help the, the collars grow bigger so you need to have it in a sunny location tip number six you want to fertilize every two weeks all right so you want to use the fish fertilizer to uh, fertilize your your collards every two weeks i find that to be the most a uh, productive way to really get your collars moving. I've tried everything, uh, but the fish fertilizer will really get them going. So let's say today's May 1st. If I, you know, mix it in water, I'll, um, you know, water my collars with the fish fertilizer mixed in with it, I would say in three to five days, the collars will start to move. So they'll start to look like they're really pushing out new leaves. And then after 10 days or so, your collar may look like an entirely different plant. So as long as you stay consistent with fertilizing every 10 to 14 days, your collars are going to continue to produce for you. All right. So that's tip number six. Tip number seven, you want to spray pests off regularly with the water hose. Now, I haven't been doing a great job with that. You can see some holes here and there but you know every some people like to do it every day it may be a little bit overwhelming for you but if i would say every three days you want to come out and spray them with a water hose you want to get the little the cabbage moss off um you want to get the worms off you want to get the caterpillars all of that off because they'll destroy everything you got also you have beetles that'll eat them you got slugs that'll eat the roots you've got uh uh ladybugs that'll eat too um so you want to keep an eye on them because everything everything wants wants your collars rabbits want them um the chipmunks will eat them as well so you gotta stay consistent and also you need decoys as well so if you got little you know fake owls you can put out or fake coyotes you want to do that as well some kind of scarecrow to kind of keep them skeptical of coming in so that's tip number seven. Tip number eight, you want to surround um, your, your collards with onions and garlic. Now, as we know, onion and garlic have a very strong smell. So when you're talking rabbits, you're talking chipmunks, you're talking squirrels. Uh, I'm not going to say raccoons. Raccoons just don't care for some reason. You know, your possums, your your rodents, that'll help kind of keep them down. And even with some insects, it'll help with as well. So you want to start to, you know, set your garden up in a way that's going to keep it pest free naturally. Um, I know a lot of you want to stay away from the pesticides. Um, so do everything you can. Get your marigolds out there as well. You know, rodents don't like marigold. They don't like the smell. So number nine, you got to pick them. So the more you pick them, the more they'll grow. What happens is you fertilize them good. You picking them regularly. It's sending signals to the plant to say, we're losing some, we need to produce more. So the more you pick, the more they start to double up and fire off new leaves. All right, so number 10 as you can see this plant is heavily mulched if you want to overwinter your collars and you don't want to have to keep planting more and more this is going to be a great way to preserve the actual plants that you have now and it'll help them last now what happens when you mulch them heavy it protects the roots so basically your plants are the roots the more protection your plants have on the roots the longer they're gonna last so keep that in mind and one thing i like to add when it comes to planting 
your collards, you guys have to realize these plants are seasonal. Now, yes, they'll they'll last all year long, but it's seasonal to pick them. So you want to grow your collars during the seasons, right? So collars are typically a spring and fall crop. So if you want to reduce the pest pressure, you want to get those plants out there early. That way, when the cabbage moths come, when the caterpillars come, you know that your season for the collars are over, right? So typically your collars are gonna grow before your pest pressure gets high. So remember that, get those plants out there early, don't baby your plants, and then you'll be able to eat them pest free because they're seasonal, right? You wanna eat them when the pest pressure is, is not high. So the summertime, a lot of people think is when you grow everything and that's not true. So get those plants out there 30 days before the spring date. And then when spring gets here, the pests aren't out yet. You know, especially where I am, it takes a while before the pests to really come. I say about June is when the pests start to really come out here, at least where I am. So keep that in mind to keep the pest pressure down as well. Well, that's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully you got something out of this video. And until next time, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe if you find this video useful. And I'm out. Peace.